we shall continue with our conversation on the criticisms on Islamic modes of finance. This conversation should be taken lightly by me and by you as well and we should maintain our sense of humor. It's not anything against anyone. We are having a conversation with a view to improve our understanding of Islamic banking and finance in general and of Islamic modes of finance in particular. Let us look at this general criticism. And this is done by some people who have good understanding of Islamic banking and finance and of the use of Islamic modes of finance in this context. And they have apparently good understanding of Islamic jurisprudence as well. So they say, combining contracts in one transaction is impermissible. And as almost all Islamic financial products combine various Islamic contracts in one way or the other, such products are not Sharia authentic. Or they might say that they, such products may not be Sharia compliant. And they present a hadith of Prophet وسلم, which forbids combining two contracts in one contract. And hence, these guys, these critics, they say Islamic banks must not do so if they are truly Islamic. So this is a criticism lodged by some scholarly people on Islamic banking and finance. I must say that this uh, is based on this confusion around the hadith. Yes, Prophet definitely forbade combining two contracts in one contract. And that was in a context. So combining two contracts in one contract is not allowed. This is, this is true. However, using one contract concurrently with another contract or other contracts, this is not forbidden. So I can have a sale contract with someone and at the same time I can have another sale contract as long as these two contracts are independent and they stand on their own, this is okay. So combining two contracts, they were, there are different examples in the conventional text. For example, if I say that no, I am going to sell this item to you only if you buy this item as well. جیسا کہ میں کسی کو کہوں کہ یہ پیر آف شوز آپ خرید رہے ہیں یا خریدنا چاہتے ہیں آئی ووڈ سیل دس پیر آف شوز ٹو یو اونلی اف یو بائے یہ پالش کے ڈبیا بھی ساتھ تو دس اف از ویری امپورٹنٹ آپ کمبائن کر رہے ہیں ایک تو یہ ہے اس کا تو دس از دس از ناٹ پاسبل دس از ناٹ پرمیسیبل آپ دونوں کو علیحدہ علیحدہ بیچ دیں اب دکانوں میں بعض اوقات یہ چیزیں کمبائنڈلی بھی رکھی جاتی ہیں اس کو بنڈلنگ آف پروڈکٹس کہتے ہیں دیٹ از ایکسیپٹیبل وہ بھی پڑی ہوئی ہے اور دوسری بھی پڑی ہوئی ہے اینڈ دیٹ بنڈل کین ہیو ون پرائز پورے بنڈل کی ایک پرائز ہوتی ہے دیٹ از اوکے فرام شریا ویو پوائنٹ آئی مسٹ کلیریفائی ناؤ اینادر ون اے لاٹ آف جیوریس دے سی دیٹ دس کمبائننگ ون ٹو کانٹریکٹس ان ون کانٹریکٹ is to make sure that there is no riba. Aap kisi ko kahen ke ye car khareed lo, lekin iske saath saath aap usse kahen ke mujhe aap loan bhi de do. Ke ye car khareed rahe ho, aur uske saath usse aap loan bhi le rahe ho. Now, because this lending thing is very, very sensitive in an Islamic framework, to aap price ko kuch is tarah adjust kar sakte hain, کہ آپ انٹرسٹ کا بینیفٹ ایک پارٹی کو دے رہی ہیں 
to curb that kind of tendency combining two contracts in one contract was not allowed. So, this is in a very specific kind of context. Now, let us see this example. If someone opts for a diminishing musharaka based mode of financing at the end does not want to continue with the ijara contract which is part of the structure. So, this is a diminishing musharaka based home financing for example, in which case this musharaka agreement is between the two parties and then there is a lease agreement between the two parties as well pursuant to which the customer of the bank lives in the property and pays the rental to the bank. Now, if down the road after three months, six months, the customer says, I want to continue with the, this Islamic mortgage based on diminishing musharaka. However, I do not want to continue with the, this ijara agreement. Because you know this ijara agreement uh, is uh, being disputed now, it does not mean that the partnership musharaka agreement would be questioned. This is not the case. So, if for some reason ijara contract lapses, it would not automatically lapse the musharaka agreement. Musharaka agreement would stay intact. This is a very fine legal point. Now, if someone wants to come out of the ijara agreement, then in most cases, in almost all cases, there would be a, a conversation for restructuring. Now, this conversation for restructuring does not take place because musharaka has lapsed, but rather this is a regulatory requirement in many cases. For example, if the customer says, I do not want to continue with ijara, rather I would like to rent this house to someone else. Now, the nature of the product changes from regulation viewpoint. Regulator in UK, for example, would say that you can use this product for your own purpose. If you want to use this house for renting to someone else, then they call that product buy to let. Wo business mein aa jati hai. Then they say, all right, restructure the deal and get this as a buy to let uh, mortgage for which there are different tax implications. Sharia ka isme koi issue nahi hota. So, ye cheez badi clearly sammish nahi padegi. There are very fine legal points. Let us explain this legal point with reference to a simpler example. Party A leases a car to another party B for one year. Party B enters into a service agency with party A pursuant to which party A should get the car maintained for on a regular basis. Maintaining the car is my responsibility. However, I have this service agency agreement with you, you should maintain it. Ab wo banda maintain hi nahi karta. And the service agency agreement is problematic. Wo service agency agreement ki replacement le ke aayenge, na ke lease hi band karne. So, lessor can say that, okay, you are not maintaining it. From now on, I am going to maintain my own car. So, lapse of service agency would not automatically lead to the cancellation of uh, the lease agreement. If the lessor wants to end the lease agreement, he or she will have to take an independent action. So, all these contracts which are used in Islamic banking and finance, they are structured in such a way that they must stand on their own in case there is a problem with one contract or the two contracts within a bigger structure.